She's made history more than once. Next. She keeps the conversation going when it comes to many issues within the trans community. Though it's no easy job, she's here to share her journey with us. She's personally been an inspiration to me. It's the beautiful Isis King. Hey, sis. <laughs> Hi, sis. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm honored. I'm so happy to have this conversation with you. So let's just jump right into it. Okay. Womanhood and sisterhood. What does that mean to you? They're one and the same. I think womanhood is uh, your journey in being a woman. But sisterhood is, I think, a little bit more important because it's that kind of tribe of women that you have with you. Sisterhood is about empowering each other, giving each other the tips and the tricks. It's about loving each other, helping each other, and helping each other to be bolder, stronger women. So they're one and the same, but they're different. I do think, though, that sisterhood is a easier way for you to embrace your womanhood, to have that tribe. I love I love that. So in terms of woman and trans woman, me, I'm not personally hung up on it because I choose to see and accept myself as I am. So, but I understand that society kind of like needs to put a label on it. How do you feel being addressed mm. in regards to being a woman, a trans woman? I, for me in general, right? I think that in everyday life, I'm just a woman. Like that's just me. I don't really need to define that anymore. But when it comes to education, I realize sometimes the, the nuance and importance of sharing a story as being trans and just putting that label. I do see the importance in it, in it because even from where I started on TV 13 years ago to see where we are now, we're still learning. People are still learning. And sometimes right. they need that. Unfortunately, sometimes the trans one-on-one, girl, sometimes, sometimes people need to be educated and learning. So I think while it is important to them in everyday life, sometimes it is important for the title because sometimes when people learn from someone who's trans and they normalize us, it normalizes us all. Uh, and that's important. So I, I do think I'm just a one, like, that's just who I am. That's just who you are. That's just our lives. But sometimes along the way, we do have to continue to educate people. And because of that, Hi, I'm a trans woman. This is my life. This is how I am. Oh, wow. You know, it's important. Yeah. I love that perspective. It 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 not only helps me be more patient with myself, but be more patient with others. So thank you for sharing that. Who are some of the in most influential women in your life? I want to always say that how much uh, Octavia St. Laurent, I didn't get to unfortunately meet her in person, uh, but we did communicate through social media uh, back when long time ago. And I saw her on Paris is Burning and that was really for me as a trans woman to see her uh, just kind of own who she was. That was a big part in the spark of me to find out how I can manage to maneuver being a trans woman as well. I wanna say my mom, of course, uh, just like you, we, we love our moms. Um, my mom is, has always played a big part for me and wanting to help her out of the hardship that she has always my entire life had to deal with. That has always been something to inspire me, but also growing up, at one point as a kid, we lived in a car for a bit and then we moved into a shelter. And then I ended up going into a shelter on my own as an adult when I transitioned. So seeing my mom put herself together and just go to work or just get through maneuver life and, and just not really let people just know all the things that she was going through and just going and doing her best. I think that's something that I definitely carry through and and I kind of just go and just smile and you know unless I open up to somebody and want to share which I'm a very vocal like open person but I want to at least still put myself together and take myself out into the world and, and if I want to bring you in I'll tell you but other than that you won't just know and I think just that polish is something and sometimes I look at my mom I'm like girl I'm still trying to put myself together like you <laughs> but sometimes that polish is important because even when you don't have anything, it can really help you maneuver in a world where the first thing people see is what they think or assume. And and that was important for me to get a job at a salon uh, where right before I got discovered and, and doing a documentary called Born in the Wrong Body and people that worked with me saw it was like, 
you're homeless. So, like, you're living in a shelter. Wait, I didn't know this. And I'm like, yeah, because coming to work is my getaway. Coming to work and living my everyday life outside of that, that is what excites me. Making this money in my account so I know that one day I'll be okay. This is what excites me. Unless I tell you all of my hardships, I'm not going to just come and bring it here because I'm going to use this experience as something to help take my mind off of everything I'm going through in my life instead of using it as something to just kind of continue to drag the experience that I was actually having out. I th- I love that we both share that their relationship with our moms. They're, they were, they're our best friend, our girlfriends, our sisters, our everything. And I love that that's a, bond, a sacred bond that we both share. And may my mother rest in peace. Have you felt as though cisgender women have made you feel seen and supported? For me, I will say in my, in my career, in my public career, to look back to see, like recently I did a campaign for Gabrielle Union. She reached out to me directly. I work with Whoopi Goldberg on Strut. Uh, Oprah was executive producer on When They See Us. Tyra was the one who discovered me. So I've always had these powerful Black women, and I'm so thankful for that because I know in everyday life, it could be hard. Sometimes cis women are our catalyst in the danger that trans women, especially Black trans women, go through. So I think I think people are learning and people are growing and evolving and women are seeing, especially like for us, like for me, women of color, Black women, to see them embrace me and to honor me and to protect me is also that sisterhood that, that I love. And it means something different when it comes to a cis woman because I feel like when they don't really understand everything we go through, uh, when they do choose to see us, it means so much. Do I feel seen? Um, I feel like I've, I've put myself in a position, and this isn't because of being a public figure. I remember going to the hair salon, right, to be around these mm-hmm. people. I put myself in a position where I, I'm, I said, I'm always going to do my best. I'm always going to look the part. I'm always going to have my head up high. So if you choose not to see me, that's on you, and I'm not going to let that deter me from who I am or who I will become. So do I feel like it ever did that? No, because I never allowed it to. And, and I know, like, I became a public figure, but I always kind of kept that model because I realized I had it before being a public figure. And it's hard because that happened all around the same time as me transitioning. So sometimes I have to think, right, like, what's different? Like, what are the differences? And that's something that I have. And I think I got that from my mom, just seeing her confident, like, this is who I am. And I always kind of just kept that. So I love when I have the love and, and that sisterhood is so important to me and every job I've had or everywhere I went, uh, I have noticed that it is obviously so important, but needing it from my family was one thing. I didn't really need it from the world. I didn't really need anyone to accept me or to love me because I'm already introverted and I can love myself and I can entertain myself. Period. But to find, but to find that tribe, to find those people anywhere you go in your, in your life, I think it is important. And and I'm always thankful when I do feel that love from them. Well, you've been receiving a lot of love and you've been breaking barriers and opening doors. What does being the first trans model on America's Next Top Model and also American Apparel, what does that mean to you? How did that make you feel? Uh, at the time of America's Next Top Model, I didn't realize how big of a deal it was going to be. It, it took for me to get off the show to really see the impact. Um so I'm glad I didn't know then because just after the show and the way I let it wait on me for mm-hmm. the band history and how it impacts so many so many people around the world, it, it was a it was a big wait. Um, but it also kept me out of trouble, right? Because I'm still at the beginning of my transition and trying to maneuver womanhood and transhood and and being homeless or not really having much. So I still had to maneuver it in a way where I know I had all these eyes on me. So it kept me out of a lot of trouble. <laughs> For sure. Um, But I really, I don't take it for granted because I see how it has positively affected so many people. Um, As far as American Apparel, I didn't realize the, I didn't realize how big that was going to be. And I definitely didn't get paid the right way to reflect how big it became. But um, yeah, obviously anybody who, who, who makes history in a way, it's always like a nice pat on the back. And I think I have moments in general sometimes when I doubt myself or when I don't really give myself the praise that I feel like most people should give themselves. And then I think there are little moments when somebody tell me, 
I, I was from this place in Asia and I saw you. So I flew to America to become a model and transition too. And I'm just like, or, or I was about to uh, commit suicide and I saw your story and it helped me to see it's a light at the end of the tunnel. So when I see things like, hear things like that, it's little things that it's like, oh, wow, if I inspired them that much, I have to inspire myself that much too. You know, it, it's been an a interesting journey along the way. And I think little moments and antidotes from other people have helped me to kind of continue this path because opportunities, bigger opportunities that are really life-changing financially, I feel like are just starting to present yourself for trans people, for, for the majority of trans people now. But this is me maneuvering my career for 13 years and uh, coming from a poor family and, and trying to figure out how can I maneuver and stay afloat without doing this, but still trying to be relevant or still try to like support myself or help my family or like what, how do I manage that when people want me for my name, want me to be on this or that for my name, but they don't want to pay me uh, accordingly. So, so I do feel like it has been an interesting journey, but whenever I hear stories about how I inspired other people, it's one of those things that snap me back. Like, this is who you are and your journey isn't over and you have to continue to elevate and to go because you still have more to do and you've helped so many people. So continue to help yourself as well. Oh, girl, you got me on here. No, you got me on here. <laughs> girl, I get emotional hearing your story and I, I swear I want to dig in and dive and, 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 Find out so much more because I know that there's a lot more. Oh, thank you for having me. I really, I really appreciate it. Just thank you again for, for being here. If you would like to watch this episode again, you can check it out at pluslikemedia.com or for other more stories like this, you can also check us out at pluslikemedia.com. Remember, follow us on, across all social media at pluslikemedia. Until next time. <laughs>